Aldien. Um, I'm just waiting on one of my colleagues to join me at the moment, uh, but let me just pull up some slides quickly. Uh, if you've just been in the Zoom chat with us, uh, you'll understand that this is obviously a new um, uh, new stage for us. This is obviously extremely uh, difficult and unusual circumstances on a global scale. So we wanted to ensure that we can try and deliver an event uh, to you, the community, that brings elements of what we do across the WordPress London meetup. So we've just had a, a 30 minute um, call, which we've had a, a really fantastic number of people come and join us within um, across that uh, discussion. So if you were there, thank you so much for being part of that. It was great to have you. We have on our website, you may be uh, interacting with us through Twitter or through Facebook or maybe even through Twitch or YouTube. We are actually on our website at wpnup.org forward slash live. Uh, we have a live chat happening in there as well, which you can come along, register and be part of. It's our hallway track. So if you've got any questions, if you've got anything that you want to discuss, uh, then wpnup.org forward slash live is really the best place to be uh, to enable you to do that. So um, just going to quickly do a couple of bits of housekeeping uh, before we start the evening. And then um, I'm going to be handing over to our fantastic speakers this evening. But first up, the format. So we, as I've mentioned, we've had um, a half hour of, of networking over on Zoom. We're now going to be in here probably for a couple of hours with the two talks that we've got for this evening. Really looking forward to both of those. Uh, and then post the talks, we're going to go into another Zoom room where we can have a, a much wider, more social focused uh, discussion. So at this stage, I would normally ask everybody to keep their mobile phones on silent out of respect for the speakers. I should probably make sure I'm doing that myself. Then, okay, so these events are run every single month, um, last Thursday of the month in London. Uh, these events are also run in other locations throughout the UK, uh, and these are all happening thanks to uh, WPNUP. WPNUP is a charity that supports and promotes positive mental health within the WordPress community. Uh, the efforts really are intended on um, helping to reduce social isolation, which obviously at this moment in time is incredibly uh, important, incredibly relevant. So if um, issues that we are facing at the moment on a global scale are something that's impacting you negatively, then please do visit wpnup.org. Uh, we have information available on there. We also have a community where we can continue um, discussing and uh, um, supporting one another uh, within our community. Uh, if you hit wpnup.org forward slash join, it's a really great place. You can come over, join our community. As I said, there's lots of conversation going on, lots of peer-to-peer -peer support, lots of people there that are looking out for one another, uh, particularly in these uh, challenging circumstances. So your hosts tonight uh, are myself, Dan Maybe. Uh, I thought we had Diane. I'm not sure where she is at the moment, but maybe she can join us. There she is. Hi. <laughs> I was just backstage. <laughs> Excellent. So yes, we got Diane. Do you want to just say a quick hello, Diane? How you introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm Diane, um, and I'm a WordPress uh, theme and plugin developer, and I'm also one of the co-hosts. I'm also flipping uh, between here and the um, uh, and the and the chat. So um, if I if I miss uh, any of your comments, I will come. I will come back to them. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. <laughs> uh, and Leo, do you want to do a quick intro? Hi, I'm Leo. Uh, I am a founder. I'm the founder of a digital sports agency that delivers sites on WordPress. Um, and typically, I'm involved in the technology side of this. So all the technology that goes wrong, um, I'm going to blame on Dan. And all the technology <laughs> that works was down to myself and Diane. So that, that's how today's going to work. 
Excellent. <laughs> uh, and thank you. I just want to say before we move any further, just a big, big thank you to the, the pair of you, obviously, for the time that you've given uh, to make this happen. But there's also been a team of other people in the background that have uh, really given time, uh, skills and expertise to to really enable this and make this happen. So thank you very much to everybody uh, out there that's involved in this. And also thank you to everybody. I see we've got a lot of, a lot of chat happening already over on wpnup.org slash live. Um, so really good, uh, really good uh, to see so many people involved in this. So um, these events, um, as I say, they're hosted by WPN Up, but WPN Up as a charity obviously needs funding, needs support. And that support comes in the form of sponsors. So I just want to quickly run through some of our sponsors and say a big, big thank you. Um, we're very, really fortunate tonight in that um, because we're doing this virtually, we can actually invite one of our sponsors on. So I just, I'm just going to invite Thomas. Hello Thomas. there. Hi. Hello. Hi everybody. Are you doing great? Thank you so much for joining yeah. us. So Thomas, yeah, uh, you're, yes. you're part of the the Weglot team. Exactly. So I'm Thomas. I'm in charge of partnerships uh, at Weglot. Uh, basically, I just wanted to come tonight and say hello. I mean, it's not uh, every day, but we have the chance to actually say hello to everybody from the WordPress community here in London. So uh, I just wanted to tell you that we are super proud and super happy to actually support the WPN app, support what you're doing within the WordPress London community. Hopefully, uh, we'll get to see each other at the World Cup or a meetup after all this crazy time. And just stay strong, stay positive, and a lot of love here from Paris, from the Regal team, and uh, I hope you'll just have an amazing event tonight. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, for, for those of you who aren't familiar, Weglot is a, a multilingual plugin. Um, you can oh, see it in action on, on both the WPNUP.org website as well as WPLDN.UK. Uh, it's a fantastic, fantastic solution. Uh, if you if you require multilingual for your website, I highly recommend visiting uh, Weglot.com. So, Thomas, Excellent, thank you so much for joining us. Please stay safe and we'll, uh, we'll yes. speak soon. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Okay, uh, so next up, Dolly. Uh, so Dolly is a turnkey solution for WordPress product vendors, agencies, and developers. Really interesting little uh, solution, uh, fairly new to markets. Uh, uh, again, if you're interested in this, if you're looking for these kind of turnkey type solutions, uh, recommend uh, taking a look at getdolly.com for more information on that one. Next up, Yoast, uh, the search engine plugin for WordPress, SEO for everyone. Uh, I think most of us are hopefully familiar with Yoast as a solution. Uh, they have come aboard to support WPN Up and are sponsoring all of our live streams for our, our events. So please do thank all of our sponsors this evening. Um, we really appreciate we really appreciate uh, the fact that these companies are enabling us to be able to deliver these events to the community. So it not only takes fi funding and finance to deliver these events, it also takes time. Um, and a number of companies are dedicating time. So I just want to say a big thank you to uh, Blue 37, Strategic Thinking of Digital uh, Experts with a Creative Edge, uh, Paul Smart, Web Design Marketing and Consultancy for Businesses Who Seek Growth Through Digital. Uh, Paul is one of our co-hosts. Uh, unfortunately, he's unable to be with us um, this evening. So uh, thoughts with you at the moment, Paul. Um, and Sotic, uh, Sotic are a digital sports agency delivering high pro, uh, pro high profile, high traffic sports sites. And Sotic is represented by Leo directly underneath. Leo, did you want to say a quick th something about Sotic at all? Uh, unsurprisingly, I've muted my mic for once. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, no, we. Uh, as you said, we're a digital sports agency that delivers uh, very large websites in WordPress. Um, interesting times, um, interesting how our clients are reusing and looking at their ways to engage with their audiences. And we're going to see a lot of that over the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that we use WordPress is making that happen and happen successfully. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yes, so it's it's uh, incredible some of the high profile sites that you're you're running on it. So yeah, thank you for what you're doing. 
Okay, so on to tonight. Um, really excited. We've got both Andrew and Tristan speaking this evening. Uh, two two very different subjects and two uh, very interesting topics that we're, we're, we're going to be hearing about. So thank you both um, for taking the time this evening to be part of this. Um, I say we're, we're, it's all a little bit new to us this evening and what we're doing here. So please forgive us if there are little glitches, little technical errors as we go through. Um, but both speakers are, as we speak right now, sitting here waiting to give their talk. So looks like everything is going as planned. So before we uh, just wanted to quickly mention uh, at 8 p.m. here in the UK, this is the WordPress London meetup. Um, at 8 p.m., we are actually just going to stop whatever is happening at 8 p.m. and just clap for our carers. Uh, it's something that's uh, been launched. Uh, a bit of, we're being asked across the UK to support our NHS at this time. So I would just ask that please, if you can, at 8 p.m. UK time, if you could please respect uh, respect this. And we're just going to take a few seconds just to obviously clap for our NHS and our carers that are doing so much incredible work for us at the moment. Okay, so before we go into speakers, uh, we always at the events have an opportunity for community announcements. So this really is an opportunity. If you're aware of anything that's going on in and around the community, um, I would normally say stick your hand up and we'll hand you a microphone. But of course, that's not going to happen. So over on wpnup.org slash live, if you're in the uh, live chat, then it's a great opportunity just to stick your uh, uh, community announcements in there and we'll do our best to try and pull them up um, and get them shared amongst the community. So it now is your opportunity just to stick them into that live chat. Um, but I appreciate some of you maybe type, typing, may take a few seconds to come through. So we've got a few to kick ourselves off with. Um, first off, uh, we had to make the decision, obviously, considering the situation, uh, to cancel the HEAD2 uh, WCEU project uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I just want to say a big, big personal thank you to all of the team that gave time uh, to bring this to the community. If you're not aware, the plan was to actually cycle from the 2019 venue in Berlin, Germany, uh, the three and a half thousand kilometers down to the venue in Portugal, in Porto. Um, and include the community and it was a there was a lot uh, coming together for this so it was a very exciting uh, very exciting project we are equally excited to see that uh, WordCamp Europe obviously being postponed this year is going to be in the same venue next year <clears throat> excuse me so we may have the potential uh, to reinvigorate this project for 2021 um, I just want to also want to say a very, very quick thank you to both Honda and Specialized. Uh, they had both uh, um, offered considerable resources to enable us uh, to undertake this project. The project is intended to obviously raise awareness of both positive physical and mental health across the WordPress community. Um, so there's uh, a requirement, obviously, to ensure that there is a uh, safety and, and uh, the individuals involved in the project are looked after. And both Honda and Specialized were companies that were taking that on. So big thank you to them. Moving on, uh, as I mentioned, WordCamp Europe. Uh, we have had a new date for 2021. So confirmed for 2021, 3rd to the 5th of June. This is uh, exciting to hear that it's going to continue in the same uh, same venue. I think it's great news that we're gonna that they've put this forward um, and that they put a stake in the ground as soon as possible uh, for everybody. While we are at the moment very concentrating on the current environment we have to look forward and the world has to start coming back together again and for the organizers who do a fabulous job every word camp um, and particularly a big event like word camp europe um which we all felt devastated for them personally and how it all came apart but to be able to put the date back in and to start planning and to go forward um i think it will be uh a really good event yeah absolutely yeah I agree. no i i know that we you know i know that we're all really grateful for um the work done by all of the word camp organizers and volunteers and speakers several that had to cancel of obviously we all know work goes in um for months before 
uh, an event so we know that they worked incredibly hard and still had to cancel but it, you know as we know it was the best thing to do but absolutely wonderful to have a date to, to have to have something to look forward to absolutely yes yeah uh, and uh, talking on that um we have got over on make.wordpress.org slash community, um, a list of WordCamps that people are um, unfortunately having to postpone or cancel in this situation. Uh, to date, there's been 34 WordCamps globally that have either been canceled or postponed. Um, I just, I'd like to, to um, echo the thanks there. The Every single volunteer that has given time, energy and effort to try and deliver these events to the community. Um, I appreciate, I have a very good idea with with, with organising WorldCamp London, I appreciate the, the work that goes into delivering these events. Um, and to put in that work, to then not see that event come to fruition uh, can be quite a challenging situation. So I just want to say a big, big, huge, big thank you to every single person that's uh, been giving time to deliver WordCamps to the community at this time. I and think it's... it's not... I... I think one of the nice things about it, we are a technology uh, organization, sorry, a, a community. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the opportunity for us to shine in certain things that we could do. I know that this isn't maybe the most important thing. And I, uh, I know that when Andrew comes on, he'll talk about, you know, he's directly related to or his girlfriend is a nurse and she's doing a job, which none of us uh, envy at the moment, but you know, is, is just brilliant. Uh, but I think we all have to do what we can do. And this is something that we can do. Um, mm -hmm. It may be a small thing. The way that I've seen the community come together, the certain elements of the community who are bringing a level of normality in a strange way. And I've done, I think this is my sixth Zoom call today I've had. And it's just we now suddenly <laughs> people want to talk to us about That's things right. that they were bored to death of in the past. We're now actually people are interested in us. Well, some of us. So, and I'll pass that over to Diane. Well, thank you, Leo. I, I've, I've, I don't, often get called uh, um, someone that brings normality so that's quite nice <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yes I mean uh, one thing that tech can do I guess is while we're all isolating is 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 a way of still reaching out to people and 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 having some sort of uh, contact some kind of social contact so you know obviously as you said, not as important as um, what you know frontline uh, medical professionals are doing, and probably not even as important as people that are delivering stuff and uh, working in shops at the moment. But it it is good to connect, mm -hmm. um, and if online is the only way that we can connect with a with a wide range of people at the moment, I think that, that is still a positive contribution. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really nice to be able to do that. That's right. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And and the, the beauty of this is we've got actually we have got WordCamps that are going ahead and are running as a virtual WordCamp. So this weekend, in, this weekend coming up, um, uh, WordCamp San, uh, San Antonio, uh, for example. So if you hit 2020.sanantonio.wordcamp.org, um, you'll see that they are running their WordCamp for free virtually uh, and looking at the schedule, they've got a three track WordCamp. So that's going to that's quite some undertaking. Um, I think it's hard enough doing this one track. <laughs> As uh, most people uh, realize, you know, I'm I'm busy trying to put the, all these messages up at once. I don't know how anybody could do three tracks at once. I mean, it's like, uh, it's hard enough. It's hard enough. Um, but it, I, I think it's great. It's, mm -hmm. it's really good. We're trying things that we haven't done before. Absolutely. And I hope their camp goes well and that people mm -hmm. visit it that would normally not visit it. So mm -hmm. it's great. That's right. It is. It's. It, we've just had it, haven't we? In our Zoom call prior to this, we've had people. So we're obviously this is the WordPress London meetup, and yet obviously we've had people globally coming and joining us and being able to be part of this. It's part of the reason why obviously we stream the live events anyway, and trying to um, you know, bring down the barriers and enable as many people to be part of it as possible. But doing it in this virtual environment it opens it up even further. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so, and and I think it's we're able to uh push technology in a way that maybe we didn't know if we could do it um and sometimes things are going to break um some things we i think this week in particular it's the week to prove that to try things that we've never tried before 
Mm-hmm. I think in two or three weeks' time, people are going to be critiquing how good it looks and how this, that, and the other, and how people's cameras work. But at the moment, for us in particular, and people building sites, it's getting things out there and trying it. So it's like no point like launching a website in three weeks' time. You might as well launch it now um, and and get it out, and then see what happens. You because yes. you're you know, it, there's never been a bigger opportunity to be able to say, and this is a beta and not have a little man digging a mm-hmm. hole in a, because we can't have people in the, in the building industry. So that little sign has got to go, hasn't it? <laughs> That's right. So that, I, so just to reiterate, we've got WordCamps. Uh, so this is WordCamp San Antonio uh, taking place this coming weekend. So this uh, Saturday and Sunday uh, and access to the event is completely free uh so we keep moving forward with wordpress 4.4 rc3 was released um uh, not that long ago when was it i think it was around the 11th of march uh, rc3 was released could be wrong there though um that's so the target date for rc uh, sorry for 5.4 is 31st of march hmm. Have we got uh, any testing going there, on? With there was a couple. Point? I think there was about um, on WP Builds. They talked about this on Monday. I, re- I think it was around about seven or eight uh, additional things were fixed on it. It's mm-hmm. very small. It's it's wound down in the number of things. There's a lot of que- questions asking about the fact that it's going to go full screen in certain modes when it goes in, um, and that's going to be a new uh, experience for people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think generally everything I've heard has been well received um, and we're moving forward in 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 the world, which is great. Yep, and things can continue. Mm. Yep. Yeah, we've got um, looking at the um, field notes, a uh, field guide for this uh, for this release. It's covering uh, was it access- accessibility, block editor, customizer menus, privacy, REST API, short codes, widgets and more. So there's there was quite a lot, uh, quite a lot undertaken initially from this uh, from this release, but I think as you say, the uh, the full screen um, full screen mode seems to be one of the bigger talking points of this particular release. Okay, moving on, um, Gutenberg seven point seven. Uh, so. Uh, sorry, actually, I think I got my dates wrong. This was the 11th of March, uh, 7.7 was released. So 7.6 is going to be released with uh, 5.4. Uh, so obviously, if you want the latest version, 7.7, you need to be installing the plugin and utilizing that. Have we got uh, our user review testing, either 5.4 or 7.7 at the moment? Um, I'm, I'm not testing it at the moment. Um... But I should. I probably should do. <laughs> I'm. I, I'm. I'm not that close at that side. Um, however, I'm following it with real interest uh, because I really do believe. I personally believe in Gutenberg and the approach, mm-hmm. and that the fact that it will bring some changes, which will be difficult, but some changes which will be really, really good to the world um i think a lot of people and this isn't maybe the right time but a lot of people are concerned about the the change in technology but it's 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 these things evolve and i I think it's good that things are evolving and moving forward um otherwise they become stale uh and 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 that and some of the discussions i hear about i'm sure that there will be and there have already been um alleyways and things that it's gone down that it's ended up being the wrong thing mm-hmm. um but it's nice that the community that and particularly the guys who are building this are recognizing their issues and then they're coming back and they're moving down different tracks and doing yeah. things so it's really good to see it well we're seeing with this one aren't we? we've got the the uh, refreshed ui uh, in this version of it uh, slightly yeah. slightly cleaner ui uh, yeah. being introduced uh, and the- the reason that I said I should be testing uh, 7.7 is because for the past um, uh, over a year, well, at least for the past year, I've been doing, I've been working mostly in in React and doing, um, moving um, everything from an old page builder into Gutenberg. So, you know, kind of, um, so that's been really good um, because it meant we could get rid of the page builder that we were using, which we really 
weren't happy with, but the content editors wanted, you know, the control over it. So, so for us, it was a good news, you know, for, for us, Gutenberg was like, yay, we, we get to, we get to lose the page builder. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, so, 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 so for me, Gutenberg has been, you know, kind of like, like mostly positive because, um, mm -hmm it fixed a, a problem for us that we had. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that, that issue across the, the kind of the page builder challenge that some, a number of us face. Uh, yes, a, not all something. page builders are built equally yeah. as, as we know. There are some, and I'm not going to uh, mention any names because, you know, kind of, um, but there are some that, that we find problematic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, just a quick thing on the... Uh, when I'm putting up some of the banners, um, there is a character limit. So I'm trying to put them in and, <laughs> and fit them. Um, but I'm trying to get as many up as I can. So yeah. that's why they're in there. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Did anybody see this one? Uh, GitHub acquiring NPM. Uh, so this is, uh, I thought this was an interesting move. Uh, it was acquired for an undisclosed sum. Have we got to, uh, uh, Diane, are you uh, an NPM? using yourself i'm I, I use both npm and um github um i uh, i only just found out today when you um when you posted what the community announcements were so you know i i'm not really sure kind of what it will mean but uh, mm -hmm. but yes i use you know i use both a lot I've, i think probably most of us do so i mean hopefully i mean we'll we'll, we'll wait and see but hopefully it could be a, a positive thing mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Um, I'm not because, as as you know, I'm not a developer anymore. Um, but this is also in, in what I found interesting on some of the announcements about this was the size and the scale of the number of yeah. number of usage. The That's figures right. were just astronomical. I don't have them to hand, but it was it was well, sort of like the billion. I've got a I've got a quote in, here, okay. so I'm going to quote from uh, from the from the blog post on GitHub, which happens. So GitHub blog is actually on WordPress. <laughs> Tick for them. Right, there you go. <laughs> um, so, so this is a quote. So the work, uh, the work of the NPM team over the last 10 years uh, and the contrib uh, contributors of hundreds of thousands of open source developers and maintainers have made NPM home to over 1.3 million packages with 75 billion downloads. That's billion yeah. with a B a month. Yeah, I uh, saw that figure and I went, Did that I really, you're just trying to put your head around that. Mm -hmm. I, it, is, is that, is that because of the the websites that are linked directly, or is it is it the? I just can't work out how you can get to that figure. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, you know, I I suppose um, that like lots of uh, you know, kind of lots of when when you install a package in npm, you could be installing several packages. So mm -hmm. I mean, that probably puts up the that puts up the the number um quite a lot you know some uh but uh, also i think just about everybody just about everybody uses it mm -hmm. um you know kind of yeah. like lots of people just uh you know you start a project and it's just one of your go to tools you know mm -hmm. for 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 better or for mm. ill <laughs> I'm, I'm sure more people use elegant marketplace but we'll come to that a bit later <laughs> Yeah, I think there's, there's, apparently there are 71 WordPress packages um, in the public NPM registry at the moment. Okay, moving on. Um, I just so that was it from us in terms of community announcements. Uh, I don't know. Do we have any others in the discussions at all elsewhere? I, I haven't seen any announcements. No. No. Okay. No problem. Um, okay, as I mentioned at the start, um, and I'm not going to not going to bang on about this too much, uh, but WPNARP is a charity, um, and unfortunately, in this time, we have seen a massive spike in terms of demand on the service. We've seen about 150 percent increase uh, in traffic and demand on the services, but we've seen a 90 percent decrease in public donations. Um, very, very aware that this is incredibly difficult times for everybody, and I fully support the message of 
being financially sensible at this stage, of course, we've got to make sure that we're looking after um, looking after ourselves at this time. Uh, but we are supporting uh, quite a large number of people through WP and Up, and we do need financial support to continue to do that. So if you have an opportunity to, um, then we really appreciate it. WPNUP.org slash donate. Or if you are currently on WPNUP.org forward slash live, there's actually a button immediately below us where you can just um, uh, drop in your payment details and make payment on the site. Okay, um, I just wanted to very very quickly thank our sponsors of WPN, uh, WPN Up, Automatic, Dolly, Funnel Packs, Weeglot, Winning WP, WPMU, Dev, and Yoast have all stepped up to support uh, WPN Up as a charity. If you can, right now, take out your phones, type in bit.ly, bit.ly forward slash WP and up, all one word, dash thanks. That will automatically that will send uh, set up a tweet for you, um, which will just thank these sponsors because it really is, um, you know, if we can encourage some engagement with these companies that are supporting us, they would really really appreciate it. It's a great way to say thank you to them all. So that's bit.ly forward slash wpnup dash thanks. Have you all taken photos? <laughs> we we. We should have done a um, a, uh, a QR code. Uh, I've <laughs> yes. seen somebody do this on a on an event actually. Oh, next next code. next month we'll uh, we'll do that. Yeah, I, I think we've done. <laughs> we I think we've technically <laughs> burned ourselves out already in this one. So uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay, right. That's enough from us for now. Um, what I'm now going to introduce you to Andrew Palmer. Andrew. Evening. Hello there. So Andrew, uh, Andrew manages the Elegant Marketplace and is the owner of Layouts Cloud, Comment Love, and the co-owner of Page Builder Cloud. You're a busy man there, Andrew. I've also got somebody's hero, and that's the whole point of the uh, superhero there. So there you yes. go, somebody's hero .co .uk is my UK agency. So yeah, I am busy. Yeah. Excellent. So um, we are going to step out now, Andrew. Um, Andrew, for those of you watching, is going to be giving his talk, as you can see on the screen there, being your best self online and offline. Um, if you have any questions at all throughout the talk, when Andrew's giving his talk, please do drop them in. If you're on wpnup.org slash live, drop them into the chat there. Uh, we are going to have a live Q&A session once Andrew has finished his talk. For now, uh, Leo, Diane, thank you so much. We're going to drop out and thank let you. Andrew get on with your talk. Thank you very much. Right. Good evening, everybody. I can see in the chat uh, that I can't see now on screen because I'm just looking directly at the camera. I can see there's around about 70 people here uh, from around the world, which is really, really good. And uh, when last time I went to WP London meetup, there are about 80 people there. So it's a, it's a good turnout. And thanks for having me here. So being your best self online, the reason, or online and offline, the reason I've done this is because I started Elegant Marketplace with a few people about five years ago. And uh, from being zero to now sort of thousand layouts, plugins and everything like that, we've, we, or I personally got some stick for things that I was doing, both professional and uh, maybe not so unprofessional, maybe not so uh, professional in Facebook groups and things like that. And uh, I reacted badly and I've learned my lesson and I learned my lesson within probably about two days when a very wise person said, just let it go. So part of my uh, mantra now these days, and it has been for about four years, is just to say, let it go and just be your best self that you can possibly be online. Uh, and so I want to really not lecture you, but try to ed educate you in how to deal with those issues or how I've dealt with the issues where people, you know, one guy put up a, a video uh, calling me a thief on uh, 80 with 85,000 YouTube visitors. And that was really quite hard to take from a mental health perspective, because basically I'm not. So we don't know what we don't know. And we've joined that social media group and we've joined YouTube and we've made a comment and things like that. And we also attend these meetups and we want to meet people and we want to be the best that we can be because we can see opportunities for friendship for business relationships and certainly with wp london i've made a couple of business relationships and unfortunately paul smart isn't here and he's uh, helped me with a good few issues that i've had using uh, a mailing 
software. I met Vito Peleg there as well with WP Feedback. We've had some great success uh, together as well. Uh, and a few other people, Paul Lacey, or, you know, I can name loads of people. Adam Warner, you know, I met in Berlin and America. So basically, we all want to be the best we can. So I've introduced myself already on the other format, and Dan's done that great job. This is me in Berlin enjoying it. And because I run so many businesses online, I realize that social media increases our reach and our potential to help or abuse. So really, I'm just going to focus on the help side. But I'm going to give you an example of a negative post that I saw a few weeks ago. This pre presentation was presented or made up a few weeks ago, and it was basically how we as developers or how we as people react to our customers when they don't actually know what they don't know. Uh, and this can't, well, sure, we can dis discuss a website. Do you have a domain name already? And then the developer said, or, or the customer said, what's a domain name? Please speak English. Now, that's not really the attitude. And I see it all the time in Facebook groups and on Twitter and on other social mediums. You wouldn't dream of saying something like that to somebody in person. So really, what this negative post got was some other replies saying, basically, you're not the agency they're looking for. Um, and this is why sometimes the industry gets a bad name. And that's what I'm trying to address tonight with you as WordPress professionals, you as people that use social media, and you as people that meet people at meetups. So I'm saying, how can we be better? Now, Socrates, who said it eons ago, we can't live better than in seeking to become better. Now, this isn't a religious thing, or it's not a philosophical thing, or it's anything. It's just we can be better. And certainly during this crisis that we've got with COVID-19, I've seen some Facebook posts, and I've seen people get really quite upset about what other people are saying about it and how we shouldn't be doing this and how we shouldn't be doing that. And it's turning into a, a, a vicious circle of people basically not being very nice to each other when at this particular time in our lifetimes, we need to be really nice to everybody. So if you see the other person's perspective and react in a kind way, that actually benefits you. What I found is that if I've helped somebody in a Facebook group with a technical issue, or if I've helped someone on Twitter with an emotional issue or referred them to WP and up or referred them to somebody that could help like a coach, it's made me feel great. I've, I've contributed and it hasn't cost me a penny. It's great. I, you know, it's a, it's just a thing that we can do. So, and also when somebody asks a question, one of the things that I really dislike quite highly is when somebody answers it, let me Google that for you at MGTFY. That's not being helpful. And I understand it can be amusing, but really that's not being helpful at all, is it? So if you can be open about their issue, whether it's personal or business, and they can do the same thing, you can end up helping people really quite well. So how can we be better? So be seen as helpful and objective rather than a ranter. We've, we've seen in Facebook groups and Twitter loads of ranting. You know, we see our celebrities rant all the time. Piers Morgan in the UK. Uh, I'm not going to mention the US ones, but, you know, people use social media to rant and it's just full of anger. And what I'm trying to pr promote is a little bit of love. You know, we all like to be kind to each other. We're kind, hopefully, to our family members and our best friends. Let's be kind to people that aren't our friends yet. And that's the point with all these Facebook groups, with thousands of people in Facebook groups that we're using, the WordPress focus groups, the, the Divi theme users groups, the um, Beaver Builder groups and everything. Be nice. Be kind. Um, if you don't want to answer a question or don't want to reply to a reply, do you know what? Scroll on. It doesn't matter. Somebody else will answer that in the way that it needs to be answered. So try not to be a keyboard warrior. That's my um, real mantra to you. Just don't be a keyboard warrior. I'm guilty of it myself in the past. Certainly, I've done it. And I've thought, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Because once it's out there, it's out there. And somebody will remember that and say, well, actually, you weren't really nice to me in, in a Facebook group or Twitter or personally even. So just be kind. That's all I'm saying. Now, how can we be better in public? It's difficult uh, because some of us are shy. Believe it or not, I'm quite shy. 
nobody ever believes me, but I really am shy, particularly in public. And I've, I'll often be a wallflower. I'll often just sit back and just let people have a conversation. I actually smoke, so I use cigarettes as an excuse to leave the room. And I'm sure that some people can identify that. And if people don't smoke or don't have anything or any other excuse to leave the room, what are you going to do? You're going to scroll on your phone so that people don't really want to approach you. But the best way to do it is feel the fear and do it anyway. It's a book uh, and it's a good book that you should read, really. Um, when we look at people in our arena, the Matt Willen works of this world, the Chris Lemers, the Miriam Shores, the Adam Prize, I'm not sure I spell all these names right, Troy Dean as well. I've met a few of these people and I thought, wow, you know, they're online all the time and they're, they're pretty famous in the WordPress um, arena. And I do I do it? Do they want to speak to me? Do, do they really need to, to sort of have someone like me in their life, even if it's only for two or three minutes? And the answer is quite simply yes. Um, Matt, I walked up to him and said, hi, Adam Warner, who's uh, probably listening to this, who's GoDaddy fleet marketing guy very very approachable people adam prize are very approachable troy dean very approachable so anybody that you see in a meetup is there for a particular reason they're there to meet so go and say hi just feel the fear and do it anyway so like i say without exception every person that i've ever met in a meetup or in public i've had to be brave to go up and say hi to them i've had to look at them in the eye and say, hi, I'm Andrew Palmer, and this is what I do. It's a 30 second introduction. Or I'm Andrew Palmer, I'm interested in what you're talking about. Can we have a conversation or can we take a side door and have a, a conversation or can I just join in your conversation, please? So the bottom line is, is the people that, if I hadn't met Dan, for instance, who who's the host here or Leo or Diane, my life would have been slightly lacking because these people have really educated me around WP and up. They've educated me around the WordPress scenario. I've only been in WordPress for eight years. It's not long. And, you know, it's half the time that WordPress has been around. So these people have educated me, the Paul Smarts of this world, the Vito Pellegs of this world about what's going in, what is really required to be a good community manager. And that's what I enjoy about these meetups. And this is what I enjoy about introducing myself to people. So, I, like I say, say hi. Say hi. Hi, I'm Andrew. I run Elegant Marketplace. I've got a thing called Page Builder Cloud. What do you do? It's that simple. Just say hi. And like I said, feel the fear and uh, do it anyway. Ask people a question. Say hi. What do you do? Where, are you, where, where have you come from? Where have you traveled from? Um, don't try and push yourself too much onto them. Be more interested in what they're doing. And I tell you what, you get fed back in spades. So be prepared, have that 30 second or even 15 second intro and you won't go far wrong. So it's a very quick presentation, this one. So in conclusion, it's easier to be kind, just like it's easier to smile. We know it is. By being helpful, you'll feel better and you'll feel better immediately. It's amazing how good you feel by just helping people. The person you're helping will feel great and the community will see you as a real contributor. Contributor, And that's really important because if you're a contributor, when you give just a little, you'll get a lot back. And that's me. That's my impression of how to be better in person and in social media. I've had to deal with issues. I've told you about the YouTube guy. I told you about the Facebook group. One guy set up a Facebook group just to go against me. It can do you some damage, but in the end, all you do is you ignore it, you move on, and you be the best person that you can possibly be. Thanks for listening. This is me. You can screen grab that, or I'm sure Dan will make this presentation available online somewhere. You can find me at Elegant Marketplace. You can find me at my Elegant Marketplace Help and Share Facebook group. And we kind of used to specialize in the Divi theme. 
but we're moving on to WordPress plugins since we got purchased by InMotion and Web Ventures. And we're really looking forward to growing the business and looking forward to helping people. Thanks very much. And uh, I'll see you in real life, hopefully, in the next couple of months or so. Andrew, thank you so much. Uh, just a bit of a shame we don't have the uh, the audience clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Some fantastic comments and lots of things uh, being discussed in that as you were as you were covering that off. It's, it's such an important topic. Um, and thank you. We're really, really grateful for you sharing that and sharing, obviously, some of your experiences. It's very quick because I was conscious that we've got an eight o'clock thing. So and I can't see anything on the screen. can't see my clock or my watch. And my oh, no. <laughs> so very difficult to see what's going on. But, uh, yeah. No, no, that, that was great. As, as I say, really good, uh, really important topic. And um, for your kind of personal feelings to come through and um, it, it's a very powerful thing to hear well it can be tough you know when somebody's nasty to you on social media or in real life it's you know it can be tough and it, it's uh it's a it's a personal growth path you know i'm used to leo being nasty to me it's easy you know I, I can have it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would I? Would I? Would I? I think I think you're right, and I think the problem with social media in particular, and we're going to see it, is at the moment we are going through a period where there's a lot of forgiving against people, or they're being, but it's already starting to turn a little bit nasty. And some of the comments, and I, we would just weren't fast enough to get some of them up there, um, are, are also people who have experienced these things. Um, we didn't social media never came with a manual it never came with an instruction of how to behave yourself um it isn't something that people have learned from school where they've said well this is how it was done in the past and this is how you do it we learn how to read and write but we don't know how to exactly learn how to write properly and i think that's a, a big uh area that we've got to be careful of i think you're an incredibly inspirational person because i know that you've had to deal with a lot of this um and you've gone through it and also uh some other people will you know would have fallen at the hurdles that have been placed in front of you um, well, i have to say lee i just got to interrupt you rudely there and say without the support of people in the community there is yeah. not a chance in hell that i would have got through no. it. I think people have been unbelievably supportive of yeah. me and their and their living marketplace it's been fantastic you know uh, I, I would agree. I, um, I'm I'm drawing my comments from listening to you on the um, um, uh, podcast. Sorry, can't even think of the names. It's uh, gone out of my mind. The the WP and Up podcast. Um, press forward. Sure. Um, and your interview on there and how you went through and you explained how some of these things happen. I think it's just as we said. The bad news is that we're involved in that side of the community or the, not the community but what happens on on social media the good news is that things like this as you've rightly said um we've built a community and we've built experiences and i think in particular some of the stuff where i've been watching some of the remote sessions on here remote sessions on wp and up remote sessions on the slack um and just experiencing that there are people who actually get what we do technically um and then can from there build a a, a relationship and a and an understanding and i think you summed up a lot of those points very well thank you very much i really appreciate it but without the you know we we, we need with wp and up we need you know how much i support wp and up you know i really care about it and love wp london i, I care about the wordpress community because we've got you know, not only do we sell stuff on Elegant Marketplace, we support 200 vendors as well. You know, they get um, to, to have a recurring income. You know, they get to sell their products and they get to do stuff. You know, I've got one vendor who lives in Pakistan who has ha who had a child and took six weeks off because they had a recurring income from selling plugins and things on, on our, our marketplace. And, and, you know, there are other marketplaces out there. You know, this is not an advert for Elegant Marketplace, but it's it's that that the benefit that I get or the, f the good feelings that I get from these guys that are, and girls and, and whatever, just selling stuff on, on our platform and using our platforms and being able to make that just a little bit more 
money so that they can live the life that they they want to live the freelancer life you know we, and, and this situation this COVID-19 situation has brought really to the, the the heart of the matter how strong we can be as freelancers because we are it is in our DNA to work from home we are used to it you know we're not maybe used to our children being home from school or or, or our partners being home from school you know some of our partners I'm sure are saying I thought you actually said you worked hard for yeah. them. <laughs> I think, I think, I think we, we've experienced that. Diane is probably the right person to talk about that now. <laughs> you know, it's, it's tough. Yeah. Diane, it is tough, isn't it? It is tough. Um, uh, usually I have the office space all to myself. Um, and now, um, you know, I've had, um, uh, and it's not that Mick doesn't work from home, but because all of his meetings now are online. Um, today earlier, we had... Um, Mick had a meeting as we were trying to do a recording, so he had to be banished to the front room, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> he did take it very well, actually. Did he? Well, this is why I, I, built, I built my log cabin. It is a, you yeah, know, it's it's a shed. It. I said, yeah, but it's my shed. <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it, so if you were, if you, as we said, we, you know, we're in that situation, and this situation has been forced upon all of us. And you, you talked about where you saw things in the past very quickly do you see that this is going to be an opportunity and maybe a reset of the clock in respect to how people treat people online what's your feeling well i don't know because i have witnessed you know i've seen some some really quite nasty facebook posts and, and stuff like that you know around the politics of this um and what we've got to understand as human beings is what well, i think you've just got to ask yourself one question would you like to be the head of any country at this moment in time uh, i i i think i i think you've nailed something there um i'm will be very glad to say that i'm not a boris supporter at the time <laughs> of voting but my god i mean i'm sorry you know you know somebody's got to lead and he looks he looks even more tired than Dan normally looks. Well you gotta look at Rish. I mean you got you gotta you gotta look at Rish. I mean he's doing an astounding you know, yeah. he's putting a great face on it and everything, but it's not just about our country, it's about every single country, you know. I've got bar a one, bar one. Bar one, yeah. <laughs> I've, uh, yes, I've let's steer away from that, shall we? <laughs> got a in India and uh, you know, they, these guys, you know, literally just started up three months ago quite a lot of investment in it. I was talking to Dan about it today. And uh we're they're all working from home. <laughs> you know? yeah. So there was yeah. no need to rent the office. It's not expensive or that expensive, but it's still an on cost that we could have mm. thought we could have thought, yeah. well, you know what, let's let's just be a remote business. But I wanted an office because you know we wanted to formalize it and there's a lot of business in Calcutta as well. So it can be a business within Calcutta. Um but what it what it says is that Actually, well, let me talk about it from Emotion's perspective because I've learned, to, I've become part of a bigger group. You know, Emotion's got 500 employees. Literally every single one of them is now working from home. That's a big deal. You know, that the communications, just, just imagine how hard it was to set this up, you know, with the communications between you and talking and talking. Imagine setting up a, a thing that where virtually all of your 500 employees are now working from home. But then we have other good news um, stories where Ascent Vision, a client of mine, they make drones, right? They're in, they're in uh, uh, Montana in America. They make drones, but because they're technical and they've got stuff that makes stuff go, thanks, Paul Lacey, I love you more <laughs> Um, he, he's been very complimentary, Paul. I think it's the fact that we uh, haven't got him on here. Yeah, he's maybe. Like he, you know, he's just going to make sure that everybody knows that we still love him as well. Because he works with 4G. And that's, you know, well, that's what we can't do. Uh, but, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I'm sense. surprised it's surprised his wireless has lasted this long to watch the whole of it. I know. <laughs> what what Sent Vision are doing is they've, they've pivoted and they're now making medical supplies because they've got the engineering technology and they've got the brains to do it. So they've pivoted yeah. and they've gone, right, this is what we're going to do. I mean, these guys, they fly, they're also part of Bridger Aerospace, which, which puts out fires. You know, all the fires in Australia, they flew to Australia. They did that. They, they put out the fires in America as well. So they're really, they're really tech guys and they're real logistical guys as well. So what's happening, I think, is anybody that's a good project manager, anybody that is a, a good, um, a thinker, a deep thinker, yeah. will really benefit 
personally and professionally out of this situation it's not a good it's not a great situation to benefit out of but will benefit by these people coming to the fore and just one thing I, I do my girlfriend is a nurse I live with a nurse and um, she's had she's actually had this week off um, so I've been waited on hand and foot you know my shed my lunch has been brought to me my drinks have been brought, brought to me but next week we're uh, you know she's back on the uh, on the cold face so you know again when we do that round of applause at uh, eight o'clock it's definitely for her she's uh, along with her, all her colleagues they work in the community they're, bra they're a brave lot anyway because they're driving around all the time visiting people I see. I mean, are, Diane, are you getting your drinks brought to you and your lunch brought to you? Now you've got a, uh, a, a servant in the house. I yeah. do. All of my, when I'm on um, meetings, uh, every now and then Mick just glides in because <laughs> my husband's a wheelchair user. So he, he, he glides in wheeling one handed with a cup of tea and everyone, everyone else in the meeting is looking and going, Oh my God, she's getting tea served to her. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, this is, you know, this is this. You know, this is this is why you get a husband so that you get tea brought to you. But um, uh, on, on, on a sensible note, one other positive thing that might come out of this is my husband works trying to make businesses have more inclusive practices for disabled people and a lot of the time things like remote working are requested as part of people's access needs and a lot of companies say it's just not possible mm -hmm. uh, and one good thing that Mick said is that we've kind of proven now with so many people having to work from home that actually it, you know it is possible and, and and actually that could be another positive thing that comes out is that you know people that you know need to, to remote work and I am very aware of the time so I will be quiet but <laughs> Diane, <that's laughs> I, I think that's a valuable point Diana and also what it does is that from from probably when the economy gets back on track nurses who haven't nurses and medical and, and the lower paid medical people haven't technically had a pay rise for seven years hmm. i think well, that's my neighbors have started clapping already teachers are all going to be on a million pounds a year just a <laughs> quick word of, a word of um because we're live streaming what we're saying now is probably you're not seeing this for about 20 or 30 seconds yeah, right so we will probably have to go quiet now because you'll see it in 30 seconds yeah we've got we've got a couple of minutes yet so maybe another minute and then we'll uh, and then we'll go we'll keep our microphones on uh, so just be aware that you are we will still hear you uh, as we as we shut off the screen yeah, <laughs> let's we'll get a couple of minutes yet so maybe another minute and then we'll oh. uh, and we'll go we'll keep our microphones on uh, so just be aware that you are we will That's still hear you. i can hear myself who's got yeah, who's uh, got there not me not me yeah. who's unmuted yeah. their screen and then we'll uh, we've got we've there. got one minute to go it's me it's me yeah oh, okay. Um, <laughs> sorry okay yeah let's go now so we've got uh we're obviously a few seconds behind so uh this is obviously for our nhs so let's clap for our carers <laughs> no on a, on a serious note i just I, at this moment just want to say obviously from all of us a huge huge thank you to every single person that's giving their time at the moment into this and, and supporting people my, my husband's still clapping i can hear yeah. him <laughs> <laughs> i think, I think, I think that the, the neighbors who started two two minutes earlier than everybody else they i think they've tired themselves out but actually we, that was a good that was a good showing on my street oh they're still going <laughs> we've got fireworks here at the moment <laughs> Well, that's, that's it, just yeah. Brilliant, that's just what it? they need is somebody going into into A and E because the firework hit them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say a huge, huge thank you to everybody that's, that's delivering any kind of support at this time. Uh, obviously, an incredibly difficult time uh, globally, and uh, obviously, this is a very, very small thing for us to be able to come together as a community right now. But if we can do this, you know, many, many more of us do this globally, then it's it. it just reduces obviously a lot of the isolation and the issues that we're facing as a, as a community at this time. So um, 
Andrew, I just want to say a huge thank you. Um, a little bit aware of time, we just need to move forward uh, with the next speaker. Um, I just, thank you, before Andrew. you disappear though, Andrew, there was one thing that came in your talk. A number of, um, you mentioned at an event, you know, just say hi. That, that yeah. There were a number of people that picked up on that in the live chat. Um, and I completely agree. Something to consider when we are no longer in this social isolation is is situation. Um, when we're at events, when we're at work camps, when we're at meetups and we get together, as a group and start chatting in a circle maybe just keep an opening in that circle because it enables people to walk in and become part of that and uh, so yeah. there's the things that we can do that uh, valuable yeah. point, very valuable point and, and make sure that you do you you're aware that you have to stop the conversation when that person comes in and so remember where you were in the conversation mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> and make sure. that's a great idea. Keeping keeping it open. I wish I'd put it into my presentation. <laughs> well, next time. Man, <laughs> yes. So we'll see that talk at WordCamp Europe then next year yeah. with that. <laughs> It'll be added. Don't worry. Excellent. Right. Okay, Andrew. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to shut your screen off now. now. Yeah. Really appreciate you being part of this, and uh, we shall speak soon. You're welcome. Goodbye. Take thank care. Thank you, Andrew. Bye. Thank you. Okay, Tristan, hello. Welcome to uh, WPLDN, virtual WPLDN. Uh, really happy to have you join us. It's really exciting to be part of the first one. So you're doing a fantastic job as well, by the way, guys. Oh, thank, uh, thank you. you. Thank you. It is a bit stressful at times. As, uh, <laughs> as another technical person, I know Tristan, you're also a bit of a techie nerd um, and love your cameras and everything, which you've got behind you. It is. It is experience. We're experiencing it, so uh, it's good. It's good. Yes. Yeah, Tristan. Oh, you have got some some quite serious setup, haven't you, for your mobile? Um, uh, yeah, be to be mobile and uh, continue you, being I've online. Got screens running in this room. I've got the one you're on the slides, a camera there, and a camera over there, um, <laughs> going on at the same time. So yeah, could be interesting. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to step uh, step aside. Um, I see we've got your slides ready to go, haven't we? Yes, let's pull those up for you. Um, so, Tristan, um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, what you do, etc. cetera, uh, but we're going to be listening to your talk, Productivity uh, in Copy Creation, Blogs, Social Media, and more. Really looking forward to this. Uh, again, for those of you that are listening out on wpnup.org slash live, uh, if you have any questions at all throughout the talk, then please do drop them in the chat there, and we'll make sure we have uh, opportunity for questions after Tristan's talk. For now, Tristan, over to you. Brilliant, thank you. Hey everyone, so uh, obviously I do things slightly differently like Dan suggested, there's all sorts of bits of tech and stuff going on in here um, and quite unashamedly wearing um, my iographer cap that arrived in the post this week. But I wanna to talk to you guys about I actually live and breathe creating content um, and I wanna show you exactly how you can do the very same thing. So as we go through this, I'm gonna be showing you um, a, a number of different things about how not only you can benefit from this, but also you can help extract the knowledge from your client's head. So I'm gonna to talk to you quite fast. Um, I'm sure that because they're streaming it, you can go back and catch anything or ask any questions uh, a little bit later if you've missed something. So um, obviously there's a bit of a, um, a description on screen of what I'm gonna be talking to you about around content creation. Content is a long form uh, medium. It's, a, it's talking about the long game. It's not something that everybody seems to think you create this content and there's this magic bullet that's gonna blow everything up. Now you might get lucky, um, but obviously um, I want you guys to interact with me. Um, if you wanna ask questions, I've actually got two screens on so I can actually see bits that are going on as I'm going through. But I'm gonna run you through, there's a little bit of a, an overview there, but I'm gonna crack straight into it. Lots of stuff to get through and 30 minutes to do it. So uh, here we go, we're gonna go through it right now. So I'm talking to you today about productivity in copy creation, all about blogs, social media content, and more than that. Uh, when we talk about the whole thing, I just want you to think of everything we're going to be discussing as digital assets, because that's what they are. They're things you're going to create that are going to serve your business long term. It's not something that's just a throwaway comment. We, we had a little bit in the previous talk about how um, you can put something up and delete it. What this is, is you're building, they're building blocks that are gonna serve you long-term. 
So there's a lot to get through, but before I get started in the actual content, there's three things that I need to uh, tell you about. Three important warnings. In the same amount of time it will take me to deliver this talk, you could have created your whole month of social content online. That's it, your whole social content, warning number one. Warning number two is that you are much more likely to take action based on what you have already lost. So by not understanding this, not knowing how to do this and understanding that, you're much more likely to take action on that than what you stand to gain. Uh, and the third thing that you need to know is if you've got a smartphone, which most people do today, let me know in the comments if you are carrying a smartphone right now, then you already have everything that you need to get started. So without any further ado, I'm gonna get straight into this. So if you're ready, let me know in the chat and I will crack straight into the content. So let me know if you're ready. Okay, the most important thing to understand is that there's nothing complicated about this. Anyone can do it. It's really, really uh, quite a simple process. And I'm gonna take you through the whole process step by step so that you don't miss anything. And it's gonna serve you and it's gonna serve your customers and clients. So these are the two things that you need to get started. It's not a light bulb and an iPad, it is knowledge and a device. Now it doesn't matter if it's an iPad, a computer with a, with a webcam, but you have to have something that can record video and knowledge for your industry. If you've got those two things, then you are all set up for everything I'm gonna be teaching you today. Don't forget, feel free to grab screenshots, post them out, and if you're gonna do that, make sure you use the hashtag bottom right of all the slides, WPLDN, just so that we can track that, we can get on top of it, and we can share it. Now, here's a little tip for you. If you share, uh, obviously myself, Dan, WP London will reshare it, which means you can actually get in front of their audience. Yep, it's as easy as that to be seen and to engage online and to get a wider audience. So I'm gonna to talk to you about a couple of quick case studies to show you that I know I'm talk what I'm talking about and why it's me that you, you're listening to tonight. <laughs> so you may or may not recognize this guy. He's a business coach in Australia. And after attending uh, a seminar that he delivered, he was talking about the social platforms he's on uh, and he named a whole load and he didn't mention Snapchat. I actually spent five minutes talking to him um, after his talk and just about Snapchat and asked him if he would be open to considering using Snapchat. Now, obviously he was open to the idea and in the next eight weeks, he made uh, $67,000 in just eight weeks. So it is really possible to make a lot of money, make a lot of progress in a platform that you are from a standing start. So don't think I've never been on a platform before it can't deliver. Uh, if you inserted TikTok here as the example, that's probably the most relevant equivalent of this right now. But in order to understand it, you need to be able to communicate well. So I explained to him in five minutes with three facts and taking two Snapchats with him to show him how it worked, why he should do it. He went on in eight weeks to make $67,000 and to also bring me on board to help him with his other strategy. So it's about understanding how to do it. Here is exactly what happened next. So we went through, you can see this is the actual snap that I took with him uh, in a lift on the way out of the building. This is the moment when he signed up. The only difference between when Gary Vaynerchuk had told him from stage and had been ranting online about it and him signing up here was that we changed his mindset about the platform. We've made him understand what the opportunity was and that's something that we obviously pride ourselves on doing. So when you think about content marketing, you need to forget about me. I'm gonna say that now on this broadcast, it's not about me, it is all about you. Content marketing is a long game. It's all about raising your visibility and your profile. It's about creating those digital assets I was talking about earlier on. They are things that you're gonna create. If you think about physical assets, things you can tangibly touch. Digital assets are things like blogs, PDFs, videos, all of the content that you create become digital assets that will serve you. And when you do it, content marketing is all about your user, your viewer, your follower, your customer, or your prospective customer. When you understand that, it becomes really, really easy. So I wanna give you more than one example, so you know it's not a fluke. This is what a nightclub that was struggling looks like after about three weeks of social media promotion. We took three weeks to take them 500% more attendees and 300% more profit. So 
this is a very different industry, very different technique. The way we did it was slightly different. We basically uh, built upon the 200 other people they had in there. It was a 600 capacity venue and we took them from 200 to 1200 people in just three weeks. And it was quite clever because we started to use social proof. We started to use uh, the people who were already there. So advocacy. And when you understand how those things work and it's about the people in the club, you can go from having hardly anyone in the club to having twice as many people as you can physically fit in there. So it can be done. You just have to get a strategy in place to do it. What it took for them wasn't anything massively groundbreaking, but it was a new approach to an old problem. They were struggling to get people in. And if you look at the pictures on the screen, the top picture is the queue on week three. And then on the bottom left is the people before we started. And the one on the right is, in fact, you can see me there on the screen, is me in the front of a crowd three weeks after we started promoting. There's nothing massively complicated about this. When you understand building around the customer, that's when it will really start to deliver. So this is all great, but I might not be a business coach. I might not be a nightclub or a bar. So what about you? I said that content marketing is all about you. This applies to everyone, and I'm about to show you exactly how that is. But before I do, <laughs> I want to set you a challenge. I said I want to see you asking comments. I want to see you getting involved. So I'm going to ask you now and I'm going to remind you later. Grab a screenshot of this. Take a photo. But this is your challenge today. I want you to start today and lead by example. We said it's not just for you. It's for your customers and clients too. How can you expect them to do something if you're not also doing it? So if you want to, grab a quick screenshot. Take a photo. I want you to record after the session, a one to two minute video talking about your biggest takeaway from this. Post it to Facebook, use the hashtag WPLDN in the description. And if you can as well, tag me, I'm Tristan G, so that I can interact, I can share, I can give you feedback uh, and obviously help you to gain a new audience. Now, what I've done by setting you this challenge is allowed you to find an easier way to do it. When you're talking about your own business, uh, when we were in the last session, we were talking a little bit about how when we're talking about ourselves, it can be slightly uncomfortable. Um, and this is you're not talking about yourself. You're talking about m the, either of the talks today or how the guys have brought it online, the conversation you've had in the chat. I don't care what it's about, but record a one to two minute video and post it online. Get over the fear of doing it. Um, Get over the fear of it and just record it. Don't worry about your hair. Don't worry about what it sounds like. Don't worry about if it's landscape or portrait. Just record it and go and post it online. You'll be amazed at what happens when you do that. So if you don't know, and this guy that is now on screen is a guy called Gary Vaynerchuk, otherwise known as Gary V. Whether you love him or hate him, he is definitely a really good digital marketer who understands what's happening with current technology, the platforms, the direction of people's attention. As he says, he day trades attention and builds businesses. That is his key thing that he does. So when you're creating content, in order to do that day trading of attention, to understand that moving forwards, you want to be where people are going, not where they currently are, you need to do one of three E's. The first of these is to engage with people. Even before you create any content, you don't write a blog, you don't have to record a video, you don't have to put content on a website, you don't have to build anything. It's the same in the WordPress world. It's the same in the web, de web development world. It is about engaging. Go and join conversations. If you don't understand Twitter, go there, put in the hashtag WPLDN, see what other people are saying and just have a conversation like you would in person. Engage before you do anything else. When you create content, it's about engaging people, getting them interested in what you are all about. As well as that, you can use education. Exactly what's happening right now. You're all here and you're watching um, on this live stream. It's the first time the guys have done it. Even uh, the, the team behind this have been learning and, and educating you about the process along the way of how they brought this into a live stream environment and how these events happen with the partnerships and sponsors and the team that works behind it and the software. So you can create educational stuff. I said it earlier, the knowledge that's in your head is what will serve you long term. 
So remember that you can educate as well as engage people. Both of them will happen together. The other thing you can do, if you haven't already heard it, there's a seven-year-old currently making millions of dollars on YouTube by opening toys. So actually entertaining people. The third E is all about entertaining. This is blogs, this is content and copy on your website, this is social media content, this is videos, this is memes, this is everything that is going on online. Engage, educate and entertain. The three E's, those are the most important things you need to write down from this point in the talk that are the way you're gonna do content and copy moving forwards. Now I'm gonna talk in two bits because obviously we're WordPress uh, related here, but I'm gonna talk to you social first and then roll it back into um, the WordPress world. So which platforms, are the most common question that I get asked by people is, what platform should I be using? Well, dependent on your business, what your niche is, who you're serving, it's gonna be different for everybody, right? So here on screen are a whole load of different platforms. Some you might recognize, some you might not. The top row are the most common ones that most people know and understand. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, which obviously um, we're broadcasting out across a number of these right now. LinkedIn, Instagram. Don't recognize the next ones, Medium and Pinterest. Uh, then across the middle, there's a few more here. Now, not everybody considers these to be social platform. So um, it, you've got WhatsApp, which remember, this falls into a very interesting category of what we refer to as dark media. Dark media is when conversations are happening but you can't see it. So people will talk about your business. They'll talk about you whether you're there or whether you're not. They'll talk about it with their friends offline and they'll also send messages that you cannot see. So things like Messenger, WhatsApp, text messages are dark media. Like if you go old school, sending a letter would have been dark media that other people didn't see. Vimeo for video, anywhere you can host video online and chat and leave comments, it's social, right? If you're looking at the other side of the world, you've got things like WeChat, we've got Tumblr in here. Now, the next one usually gets a giggle. The little flame in the middle, if you don't recognize it, it's Tinder. Now, even people like Tony Robbins um, are advertising in this platform. It's, there's pictures there, people are swiping left and right to match up, and this is the current form of online dating. But actually, it's a social platform. People are basically having conversations there, they're connecting, so it's a form of social media. Same with sharing your music from Spotify, sharing your links on Stumbled Upon, learning and educating, so educational content through what used to be SlideShare, which is now part of LinkedIn's platform. Remember that that's there, Reddit, if you don't know Reddit, go check it out. It is one of the core places on the internet that most things start. Uh, Meetup, obviously if you're here, you know about Meetup, you've probably gone and registered there to be in here unless you got sent the live link. Then we've got TikTok. The biggest organic opportunity right now on the internet is TikTok because it's new, no one's really mastered it yet and the rules don't get set on platforms until too many people are there. Now. The last two just down there very quickly, Google My Business. If you are not set up on Google My Business, message me afterwards and I'm gonna get you set up because it is so important that people can find you, discover you, and remember when people Google something or search for it, Google owns that real estate and is gonna preference it over anything else. The other one is Snapchat if you want and you've got Snapchat, feel free to add me via that Snap code or Buar code as they call it on the screen right there. So just touching about the platforms, but this is not even scratching the surface of where you could spend time on social. This is the social side, but for web dev, this is the web dev special, right? This is WordPress London. So I want to make it relevant to you. If we're creating videos, if we're writing social media content like LinkedIn articles and blogs, uh, and Facebook notes and stuff like that, how's that relevant to WordPress websites? Well, here's where it's important. The first thing I wanna ask you is, how is this gonna to apply to you? Have a little think about it for a minute. Creating content online, it's really important that you consider something. Have you ever found yourself like designing a website, the, the, the look is done, the coding is done, it's ready to go, and you're waiting on the copy from someone to sign the job off? The strategy we use for social is exactly the same as you can do to extract that information from the customer's head in a very, easy way. So it's really important that you look at this strategy I'm going to show you as a way to do copy for the website so you can sign it off. 
Blogging, helping your customers to understand how to blog much more easily will help you to sell maintenance packages. It's a nice way to do an upsell by providing some additional value, and I'm gonna cover that very quickly. You're also gonna help your clients to market better. In this current day, people need to market better, especially right now while people are worrying. Some people are pulling away from marketing and others are doubling down. Just think for a minute, whilst we're in a global pandemic, People are spending more time online, consuming more content. Why would you create less? So help them to create better content. That's blogs, that's social content. Double down and help them to stay in business. And that way they can stay with you and they can carry on working with you. Ultimately, this strategy will make your life easier. So what do I mean about content? There's two strands here. One of them is what exact types so of things like written images, videos, uh, live or pre-recorded uh, blogs, articles, notes, SMS, all the dark media that we talked about. But the right hand side is all about the types of things you put into those. So showing off behind the scenes, like the kid opening the presents and unboxing, right? Those two things sit there. If you've got a product launch, give a little bit of a teaser. I know that Dave from Iographer teases me with stuff just before it comes out um, and shows me the behind the scenes, which also ties neatly into a product launch. Can you create launch pages and things like that? Events, exactly this. This is content. Right now they're creating content across multiple platforms. But if you guys take screenshots and you put them on Twitter, in fact, if you go to Twitter and put in WPLDN, I've already screenshotted the previous talks and the guys setting up so that you, I could put it out as content. User generated content is the golden goose of content creation. You don't have to do it, but your business will benefit. And the same will apply when you teach this to your clients. Use case studies. I just showed you two online and meet the team. Well, I introduced myself to you uh, and you've met the team of uh, WordPress London. In order to do content, you need to understand four really important things. What is the main purpose of the content that you're creating? Are you sticking to the brand tone? Are you a funny or a serious like, you know, is it OK to joke or does everything have to be very factual? Also work out where you're going to spend time, the platforms, the content types, and work out your posting schedule and the types that you're gonna work, remember? This is, this is it, this is the four key things that you need to know to build out a content strategy. You need to set up right, otherwise it's gonna be hard work. Most people say, I haven't got time. Right now, that is the worst excuse you could give me. Everybody is at home, everybody has more time at a screen, at a computer, with a device in their hand than ever before. You just need the tools in place in order to build out a proper, content workflow and I have got a slide that I'll get Dan and the guys to send out to you guys which has links and there's some promotional bits in there to get you some discounts and some offers on some of the things as well because we've spent years building a workflow that works for us and it works for every single industry so we haven't yet found an industry that this strategy doesn't work because the way it works is extracting the knowledge from your head repurposing it and creating more content when you create your content, it needs to be compelling, otherwise people won't wanna watch it, read it, listen to it. We're gonna show you about how to get user-generated content, the golden goose, and also, you need to be consistent and have a way to manage it. If you haven't got the tools in place, that is not gonna happen. Don't consider content as a one-time thing either. When you create some content online, you can create content that serves over and over and over again. And I want to hat tip Lee Jackson for this one um, for doing a fantastic job of taking podcasts and repurposing them into other bits of content, images for Instagram, quotes that go out online. He's doing a great job of exactly what I'm going to share with you. Now, he's also given talks on podcasting at workshops where I teach this exact strategy over six hours, but we haven't got six hours, so I'm going to crack straight into it. So you probably sat there thinking, it's all great, you've told us what, what we need to do, why we need to do it, but now you need to know how to do it. Most talks don't ever get to this point. This is exactly how you do it. Feel free to take a screenshot. Please do, if you take a screenshot, please do post it online. This is not a secret formula. Anybody can do it. I said it at the beginning. If you want to support us, you can go to our messenger and you can type in WPLDN um, and it will deliver this to you as a download into your messenger chat. It will help us to help you further. If you want that help, please do grab a screenshot and go and do that afterwards. But this formula is absolute gold and I'm going to whistle through it to make sure that you understand it.
So the reason I started earlier and said, hey, go create a video in our workshop, you would normally do that in a break and have already done it when I teach you this part. Obviously, we're on 30 minutes or so. So I just want to check in and show you that when you've done that video, you could then from that video, you could get that transcription from that video and turn it into a blog. So when you teach your customers that having these magical little devices in our pockets that are, are crazy powerful, we can record a video and we can repurpose it into other pieces of content. Now your blog lands in lots of different places. That's on the website. We're talking about websites. So on the website first, so that that's the key place that Google knows it's from. Then you can go Facebook notes, LinkedIn articles, Google My Business, you can go out on Medium, industry websites, you can crush it with one piece of content at the top that brings you right down into loads of long form content. We don't just wanna use it there though, we're also gonna pull quotes out of it. I told you Lee's already doing this, so things like how we took our event online and that teases people into the long form content back to the website, back to where you're tracking and engaging them and keeping them in your brand and building the relationship. You can obviously create graphics, which Lee does for his Instagram account. Uh, and then if you, if you don't know what I mean by Gary V style video, if you see the square videos with the timer bars and the titles and the subtitles, we call them epics in our company because they are epic online and they perform really well. They're, they're, the timer bar shows people how long it is before uh, the end of the video so people know how much attention it's going to be and things like that so these are multiple different ways you can create content from one video that went in the top and that's before we start stripping out the audio creating animations like waveforms which lee is also doing you can see those waveforms from his podcast showing with the words and stuff underneath you can create waveforms you can create um uh, the kinetic typography, so the words that pop up and move around. There's loads of different things you can do with it to make it interesting and engaging for people. You can also obviously strip that audio out from the video and put it out as a podcast. The number of places and pieces of content you get out of that one video is crazy. If you just look on the bottom line, one video of about three minutes of your time will create for you a three to 400 word blog. You'll get a uh, You'll get long form for your website, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google My Business and Medium, which is five bits of content long form. Then your quotes, you probably pull about five quotes from that, which goes onto three platforms. So that's another 15 bits of content. Then when you turn them into graphics, another 15 bits of content or 20, because obviously you have Instagram as well. Uh, So on my screen, I've gone full black screen, so I don't know if the guys are still there to help me out with losing the uh, screen. Tristan, can you hear me? Hey there, Dan. Yes, yeah, can you hear me okay? I've got you, one sec. Yeah, we seem to have... Uh, I seem to have lost my screen, so let me try and bring that back up. Okay, I think we're back now. There's some uh, some error code. If you're on the um, if you're watching this on wpnup.org/live uh, or on YouTube, it looks like a refresh of the page uh, will get you back. For some reason uh, we've had a, an error come up from YouTube. Not sure, quite sure what's happened there. So apologies, uh, Tristan. Have you managed to get your? Let's see, you got your slide. Yeah, I'm back, back up. I've got my yep. screen there and stuff. Excellent. Back up. Okay, I'll duck. I'll duck back out and let you crack on. Amazing. Thanks, Dan. So. Things like this will happen when you're creating content. Things won't always go perfectly, but that's okay. It's totally all right to have problems and things that happen online that are going to be an issue. Remember that as these things happen, you're showing that you're real. People want to connect with someone who is a real person that they can connect with and that they can really build a relationship with. So don't worry too much. Is my hair right? Is my makeup perfect? Am I a bit croaky in my throat, don't worry, don't overthink it, just create the content. So um, going through it, one three minute video is gonna create you, like I said, five long form pieces of content, then you go quotes, which is five quotes across three platforms, you're gonna get like another 15, then you're gonna go across to graphics, which is another four, so put 20 pieces there, and remember all you've done is 30 minutes in at the top to get this out. 
If we look at across the other side, podcast goes to Lee will be able to tell me how many platforms. I think it's about 10 to 12 main ones that you can post out to because you've got uh, Spotify, Apple Music, um, which is obviously iTunes, Google Play, all of these different things. Don't worry about it. Get them done. I'm going to share a little secret about how Gary Vee does his content and gets so much out is that they're not so obsessed on the minute detail of getting it out. And when you're right, like when you're historically right, you go back and reference it. And those slight bits where you might be slightly off, people are not going to remember everything. Remember, it is so busy online. There's so much content going out and being consumed. Uh, in fact, I can give you a very real example. Right now, during this pandemic, uh, Joe Wicks in the UK is doing PE for the kids. So he's doing a live stream on YouTube and he's getting 806 thousand households watching his stream which means in 30 minutes of exercise that he's putting out online 45 years of content is being consumed let that sink in for a minute you create it once at the top turn it into all the other content and then you've got so many what we refer to as viewpoints that people can find you on obviously we want to focus in on the website side the blogs but those blogs getting repurposed as pieces of content elsewhere you can't force people to go somewhere. You need to allow them to discover you wherever, build the relationship, and once they have, they're going to come back to your hub, to your website where there's more resources because they're already bought into what you do. Any, the reason Facebook doesn't like people leaving isn't just to do with their ads. It's a bad experience to go away because every time you click a link and go away, how social is built to make us want to every interaction and every notification is we start to miss it and want to go back. So they've built it that way to try and encourage you to go back. So allow people to discover you in different places, build the trust, build the credibility, and then get them to come back over to you. So that's it, content creation machine. It works irrespective of industry. You can go download it. And if you do that, there's loads of other free resources there that I'll be able to provide you with. It's going to help you to also generate leads. It's not just about doing the work for the sake of work. It's about starting conversations. When you put content out, people are going to comment and then you're going to start a conversation. That is going to lead you to social selling. That is not the act of selling on social. That is literally selling by having those conversations and people building uh, trust with you and starting to understand what you have to offer. The other thing is content works for you when you are not working. It's the best kind of sales process you can have. Wouldn't it be great to wake up to loads more inquiries online because you created good content? Like it's not hard. You've already got the knowledge. I'm going to skip this bit. This is basically just talking about where people are on the online. Go to where they are, podcasts, shopping sites, give them options to spend time there and collaborate with people. The most important part is that they are interested people are interested in great stories if you've got a story to tell then share it if your company um obviously andrew's just shared a little bit about um elegant marketplace and the build of that and how that's gone and who he's been involved with and the relationships he's had they are great stories um so start sharing them document don't create if you look behind me that is actually currently recording a time lapse i've got a video up there that is creating video for me at a different angle to what you're seeing so that i can pull out pieces of content that i might want later so i'm living and breathing what i'm talking about when you document you don't need to think about it forget about content creation and start doing documentation it becomes way way easier now you guys have got this it's not difficult um you can do it record that video and tell us what your biggest takeaway was from the session what did you learn one to two minutes if it's your first video i'm going to support you i'm going to be your biggest cheerleader online when you put it up and you use the wp ldn hashtag and you tag me i'm going to share it i'm going to give you feedback and i'm going to give you some help to make sure that you feel confident to do it again, that you understand how you could improve it, whether that's audio, lighting, or anything like that. And I'm your, gonna be your biggest cheerleader. So this is your challenge reminder if you didn't get the, the uh, screenshot before. I said about getting systems in place. Now I've got offers and deals. I tend to negotiate hard with people when I'm talking to them and I'm endorsing this to hundreds and thousands of people because I talk on various different platforms through live stream and events. 
Now, feel free to screenshot this one. It is platforms, but before you sign up to anything, message us because we've got deals and, and offers and promotions where you will get discounts and you will get additional features inside some of the platforms and we can recommend the kit to you so that you make sure you get the very best stuff. You'll notice that there's like lighting going on down behind me. I've got a ring light there, there and there, and it's not expensive. It's quite easy to get all of this stuff in place dependent on your budget there's different options and we can help you to find the very best throughout this period i'm going to be doing some crazy stuff helping people like find the solution that they need to work from home we're actually running three free workshops to help people to do that but this if you want this i'm actually going to create a clickable version of this and send it to dan to email out to all attendees and probably put it up on the site as well um, he'll send the link back out to all of you guys so if you weren't registered make sure that you comment so that we can make sure that we get it to you i want to make sure that it's as easy for you as possible um i'm not going to talk you through them because it's death by powerpoint and i'm not about that um, i'm aware i've probably spoken half a book at you in the 30 odd minutes that we've been sharing together but social content putting content out on your website and on social is going to raise your game it's going to start doing what is called social selling. If you're on LinkedIn, you can go and see how good you are on that platform by using the social selling index there, linkedin.com forward slash sales forward slash SSI, and it will show you the four main elements of how they track that. Are you engaging with people? Are you connecting with the right people? It's, it's not super accurate because of course, it doesn't know why you're connecting or who you're connecting with. But if you uh, it, it, these four points that it highlights as things that they measure are relevant across all of them. It also compares you to your industry so you can see where can I improve. That that can be tracked and measured can be improved. So think about how you could possibly improve on that. That's it. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I'm ready for q and I'm sure there's probably going to be loads of questions. Uh, and I'm ready to give you guys some, some answers to the questions you've got. This is me. This is me doing what I do, talking live streaming, sharing with people, and anyone who remembers it, this picture right in the bottom at the middle is actually a very old video sharing platform called Blab, which is how I know Lee and various other people that I now work with. So real life connections will be built online. You just need to invest the time there to make sure that that happens. Tristan, thank you so much. And again, if we could have that big round of applause. Jumping back on, I think Dan will probably jump back on uh, with the question side. I'm, I'm yes. ready for that. Let me just unmute the site so that I can get you. There we go. Can you, excellent. Can you hear me now, Tristan? Yes, got you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, a fancy, fantastic talk. Uh, really, it's so much in there for us to uh, to dive into. Uh, and it's our session. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> really appreciate you obviously taking the time to uh, to bring this in in such a short and obviously such a condensed way. Uh, no, a, a lot of uh, a lot of questions, a lot of things, a lot of um, discussion going on, uh, and a lot of a lot of love from Lee as well in there. Obviously, from uh, so thank you. I know Lee got kicked, got Absolutely booted out in that little glitch. He's actually doing what I've been teaching as well. And when these, like these things will happen, right? I've literally gone to film stuff and I've had a flat battery on something or like there will always be a bug. And like, sometimes you can control it and sometimes it's out of your control and you just have to roll with the punches. I've been going to speak at events and literally the, the monitors have gone down or there's not a connection for the laptop or things like that. So just don't let it fluster you like be prepared to talk without slides even if you've taken them to something when you're writing content if you make anyone who's going to go online and you will get this because there's so many people online with a lot of time especially now you will get people pick up on you made a spelling mistake or that wasn't quite right or that colors off that doesn't reflect on you that only reflects on them like if they've got the time to do that, who wants to tear someone down? Very different to send someone a private message saying, hey, I noticed this. Do you want to fix it? I do that all the time. I don't know if you realize this link is broken rather than oh, posting stuff without links. So you're going to get it if you if you post online. And if you're not getting any of it, you're not posting enough online. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is often the case, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, I'm just going to, uh, Diane, did you, are you happy to jump back in? We've got a couple of questions uh, that have come in. Let me see. Where are we? Diane, are you? <laughs> You're on mute. 
Hello. There we go. Yes, you can hear you now. <laughs> um, yeah, we've, we've obviously had a few questions come in um, and just thought if uh, happy to go through. If anybody else has any other questions as well, feel free to post them in the chat. Um, we've tried to grab them as the questions have been coming in. So if there, if we miss any apologies, but do uh, feel free to, to chuck a question in again. Uh, but the first one came from, um, I don't know the name, it's uh, user MDW1989. The questions for Tristan, Google My Business. Yeah. Um, how do you uh, how do you get visibility on it without a real world address from where you trade? Um, it's actually super easy. Um, a lot of people misunderstand that Google My Business is just an online listing and representation. You can... You have to prove your physical location because Google's whole aim is to provide the most relevant information. You have to, uh, you just literally tick a box. They still send your postcard in the post to prove you're at that address. Uh, but you can say, don't show my address, but I service this area. So for me, that looks like some weird triangle over the whole of the UK, America, and Australia. Um, <laughs> And a little bit of Canada, which is quite weird because I show up in listings in other places around the world. Um, so you can do it without a physical location. You don't you only have to have like if you work from home, you obviously don't want your home address out on the Internet for people. But you register as your home address and you might have to fight with Google. Sometimes they say we need a sign. It's really easy. You just buy like a piece of four, four X, foam X board, stick it on your wall, take a picture, send it to them and then take it down. It's not difficult. Like you can make it happen. Uh, so you can do it without a physical location. Absolutely. Yeah, I guess you've also got the the option for virtual um, yeah, virtual addresses if you're obviously not wanting, particularly if you're working from home and not wanting to use your home address. Um, yeah, a lot of um, businesses actually use their registered address as their accountants um, a lot of the time. It is an easy way to do that sometimes. You check with the accountant, obviously, first. Yeah. Um, a good way to get around it. Or it's about, you can do it, you can have like a London address for about 20 or 30 pounds a year now. Um, mm -hmm. There's these virtual addresses, so that works. Mm -hmm. It's, and actually, yeah. it sometimes gives a perception that you're a bigger company, depending on mm -hmm. rather than being out in the sticks at a farm address, you can put yourself in central London. You allow people, people will always make an assumption being based in London in a certain desirable postcode makes you look like a better business. Unfortunately, <laughs> yes, yeah. There were there were a number of questions actually came up, all, all uh, predominantly relating to uh, Google My Business. Um, it's really, uh, underrated. really, really underrated. Yes. Yeah. So what, what would you be kind of what would your go to in terms of the kind of Google My Business? What would you what would you suggest would be the first thing people do if they're not currently using it? Uh, set up. So Google.co.uk forward slash business. And it is literally like they run you on a step by step guide. They're probably one of the easiest platforms to make sure you're set up properly because they Google wants you on there. Because once you're on there, then they can try and get you to spend money on Google ads. Same as everybody else. They want your money. Yep. Um, but there are loads, there's loads you can do free. Um, and it is, to give you context, if if the internet was real estate, Google My Business is the biggest, most valuable piece of free real estate on the internet. If you've ever punched a search in on Google and it comes up in that top right-hand corner, that big box, if you can get that for someone's search, like that's massive. It's there and it's right in your face and it's absolutely free to get that as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. They, um, they actually make it very easy if you're uh, um yeah quite a remote you know, on the road using your phone etc you've got the google my business app um you can actually po publish your posts can't you from from the app directly uh, yeah a, like, there's loads of people who have been set up on google my business either someone's popped into their business and said hey you need to do this i'll charge you 150 quid to do something that you could do yourself um but then they've never used it and, mm -hmm. and google is going to always preference someone who's active on the platform so if you're not using posts, if you're not uploading photos, and like sometimes you get lucky and other people post for your business, you know, they're like, if you've got, a, you know, if you work from a historic castle, people are going to put pictures online, um, which does you the user generated content, but you want control of that as well. So you have to control the content that goes there. Um, you can also run events, special offers, and the events part is really powerful because it appears in search under the listings. Yes, yeah, it is. It is a very, very, very powerful, uh, powerful solution, isn't it? For, uh, there was another question uh, from Rosie. Rosie. Uh, yes, yeah. Diane, do you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. So um, Rosie said that she'd previously been advised to only on her business account to only post photos uh, related to her business and never have words on them or, or never post graphics. And she said that uh, she looked at Lee's 
and it was the total opposite and looks fabulous by the way um she was just wondering has she been misinformed about how to use instagram um there's obviously a lot of self-professed experts on the internet. You'll never hear me refer to myself as an expert or a specialist or anything like that. Um, ultimately, if I've learned it through doing it and, and you can see me doing it, I'm teaching you from experience um, and it's not something I've learned online or any of that. Um, I'm just literally giving you real world advice in the same way I've all the resources I shared take you to places. Um, with regards to what goes in your feed, nobody's business except yours. Like if you post it and it doesn't work, try something else. Like that's the real, the real litmus test is the content you create will determine that. Like be ready to pivot in the same way. Um, I posted this week about, uh, for example, like Zenly, um, the platform that's owned by Snapchat. They're a, they track people going out. Of course, that's a bit of a redundant platform right now all around the world. So they created a leaderboard for who out of your friends stays in their home the longest. So they completely 180 pivoted. So you need to do that. You need to track, measure, and stay. It's relevancy. Google doesn't just deliver based on information. It delivers based on relevancy. So same applies to all social platforms. If it's not relevant, the platform is just going to squash it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I mean, obviously, in this world, there are just so many platforms. It's yeah, you know, it's it can be difficult sometimes to think where where do you focus your attention? You know, what where should you as a business be you know, placing what can often be quite limited resources? Um, do you, I guess it, it comes down to the business. What what would you kind of suggest? So there's a couple, there's a couple of variables in play here. Um, the first one is obviously how much time have you got? Like when we do this as a six hour workshop, we actually do three segments and we get people to write it down. And actually it might be worth people on this session doing it. Like I, I do it through the day, but the first segment is how much time per week can you spend on social for your business or do you currently spend on there? So we normally do what are you normally spending and we get between like four and like 40 hours for people at workshops. Um, and the people on four are like, yeah, but I'm not really doing anything. I'm just looking at cat memes. And the people on four are like, I'm doing it and not getting a result. The next thing you need to look at is um, what um, what amount of money um, do I get as an average? If I make a sale, what's my average sale? Mm -hmm. Because all, everything you do in your business, you should be looking at how do I get to return on investment? Not that everything is directly related to that, especially social. People want to put one thing online and get a thousand pound sale. It doesn't work like that. It's a long, long game. But if you're going to invest 40 hours a week, you need to look at, okay, I need to be making X amount of money to make that time worth it when I get to the sale. If I've got a post for three weeks to get that, I'm going to be putting in 120 hours to get to there. So that's the other metric is that. And then the third metric is, from that calculation, how many customers do I need in order to either warrant me doing it or to pay someone else to do it? Because the one thing that we're all terrible at is staying on consistency, right? And like I do it, like Lee's going to hold me massively accountable to the fact I've got like four days to finish a website that uh, I've I promised I would get loads of pages done and I publicly announced it as well. So definitely have to get it done. <laughs> so busy four days ahead. Um, but the consistency side comes from once you've got those metrics in place, if you know that for every 40 hours you put in, you're going to make X amount of money. It's not direct. You can never guarantee it, but you can you can have a very good guess at it if you understand the business and start doing things. You have to measure against it. Like everything has to be measured. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes, yeah. I think it goes across the board, isn't it? That, that you know, measure and and iterate from obviously the results that you're seeing uh, mm. through. The other thing is one of the massively so jump back to Instagram really quickly because there was a specific Instagram question. Um, what you post, that's completely up to you. It depends on what your, your tone of voice was. What's the objective of you doing it? Some people are. In fact, I was listening to the Goat Agency, which is Europe's fastest growing digital agency, and they put out some content the other day saying that they've never seen so many people creating content with like not no objective, but not trying to get to sale right now. People are not trying to get to sale. They're trying to stay relevant and in people's minds. When you create the content based on whatever the objective is, a lot of people don't realize if you put it as a post, share the post into your story. Cause I might only see stories and not look at your profile. I only see it if, if it's in my feed or I go to your profile, but stories sits stories is like, Again, to a gold, golden egg, 
right? It's at the top of every platform. Going Instagram, it's at the top. Going WhatsApp, it's at the top. Going to Facebook, it's at the top. And they take up more and more. They all want you in that stories bit because it's quick and it's the expired thing. Tell you what, that's where Snapchat absolutely got it right. Expiring content means people have to go there every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. It's um, it it's a, it can be quite challenging, can't it, in terms of this kind of management of social yeah. for, for companies. Um, I mean, you've got tools that that you know. It, do you look at tools like Buffer? Do you look at some of these other tools that enable you to kind of get across multiple platforms? And you know that kind of automated solution is, you know, yeah. I think people these days they they understand they 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 recognise automated content, don't they? They recognise they recognise that stuff when and no engage less. I completely disagree, uh, and okay. not just to, not just to be controversial either. Mm-hmm. I disagree. People recognise lazy automated content. Mm-hmm. Because if you go to post on a platform, it's actually no different than putting it in something that posts it dependent on platform. Some show you that it was posted Mm -hmm. by a thing like Facebook has a bit. The reality is how many pieces of content are people consuming in a day? And if it's relevant to them, again, this comes back to how relevant, how important. And if it's about them, like, do you care if it was posted? If someone puts out a piece of content that says, Hey, do you live in this area? You can save this amount of money against your insurance just by doing this. Do you care if it was posted by Buffer? No, because it's relevant and it's targeted at you in that area, right? So when it's relevant and when it's useful to you specifically, you don't care. Like the metrics, the algorithms, I've, I've seen three different agencies do independent tests of posted natively and posted not. It doesn't, it doesn't make a vast difference. Yeah. Especially if you've got... The big problem comes for a lot of people in the fact that far too many people have bought followers or have done like for like or things like that. I'm like, I don't want anyone to like people like you're an agency, don't have loads of people following you. I'm like, no, but when I hit them up and with a message, they reply every time because I can send them. And also people can't see we have conversations in Messenger. What did I do today? Sent people from here to Messenger to have a conversation with the company, dark media. Like anyone in your competition who can see what you're doing can copy it. If you're doing it in dark media, people can't copy you. Mm-hmm. Like build a build, like here, this is a public chat. People go, that's a really good strategy, Dan. I can copy that. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying not to do it, but also you've got a community, a safe space, and a good place. That bit where you control it is where the magic happens. That's where you build a relationship. That's where people really buy into brand. Absolutely, excellent. I think was there. Uh, did we have any other questions coming in from questions coming in from the chat there? So I'm, I've not quite managed to keep on top no. of all the chat. There's been some hmm. fantastic stuff being uh, going there's through. A, there. There's there's lots of comments. People sort of saying, you know, um, like well done and thank you and mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. but I don't think any specific questions. But if anyone does have any. Um, questions that they want to ask Tristan now now is your chance <laughs> yes. yeah we I think so we, I think we'll wrap up we've got um, the social uh, social zoom call uh, to, to move into um, yeah, so, a little bit, so if anyone wants yeah. to zoom I'm there Excellent, and I think that the kind of the voice, the, the, you know, the face-to-face, have a have it ask the questions is a really good opportunity. Um, so if yourself and I'm not sure if Andrew's still about with us, but if uh, if so, um, if you're happy, if people are prepared to ask questions, Andrew, um, oh, great. I've just brought oh. Andrew on. Oh, I think Andrew. <laughs> Does, did Andrew? Did Andrew know? <laughs> oh my god! Sorry, uh, sorry, Andrew. I just I just said, oh, you know, like. Uh, all right, uh, so it's all it's all been going swimmingly and now it's all fallen apart at the end. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, great. Tristan, I've got to tell you, I'm not going to blow smoke up anybody's whatever today, but my God. Yes. And also Google my business. I've been throwing that down people's throats for the 20 years that I've been in SEO. It's just crazy how good Google from Google my business is. And, uh, you know, the whole thing, Snapchat, the whole social media, you know that we built a group of around about 30,000 on Facebook and now we're rebuilding another group. We've got two and a half thousand already. You know, it's so, so important to get the message out on so many different platforms if you can. And, and you know, I always kind of diss the, the buffers of this world and the type of, pub, you know, auto publishing. But you know what? If you use it properly, it's it works, you know, and yeah. the dark 
conversations, you know, I probably get 20 messages a day through Facebook. Crazy. So yeah. use it and you're, you know, if you've got, you've got a great bot going on in your um, messenger. There's some broken um, links in it that I need to fix, but we'll get to that. Yeah, but you know, that's, that's the thing because we look after so many platforms and I've got a couple of bots in my, in my messengers as well, but it's tough to keep up to mm -hmm. speed and sometimes the web lets you down, but you know, your talk, man, it was just crazy good. You can see why I talk so fast. I've got a lot to say and I've got to get it all in. That yeah. <laughs> That talk is actually built off the back of, um, I went to Milan to a marketing and business summit and they asked me to deliver basically a talk they'd seen, but it's my six hour workshop. And yeah. so I did 36 slides in 30 minutes. And yeah. that's why there's three warnings on the beginning because they were also translating at the back of the room. So wow. they were like, they were watching in a live stream with a lag, which was super interesting. <laughs> no, it was great. It was great. And, and what a, you know what, you lot, well, I just can't even begin to tell you how much, how good this is. You know, I've been watching the the conversations and uh, I've been getting private messages from people saying, how good is this? You know, in my face, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So you've done a, you know, a round of applause for you guys, really. Literally, you are stars you've, to bring this all together. And I'm going to get to bed before one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> The social and the user generated, the one thing that anyone who's still live, if they thought it was good, should go to Facebook or Google or anywhere and leave a review so that your people see it and then it grows because obviously it's a community. You need to give back as well because obviously people have enough time and stuff as well. It's really good. I think that's a, one of the thoughts I've had about this is that obviously we've done this because of the, um, the needs. But the question is, is, have we created something that, may outlast this current need and will this become maybe not the norm but is this a a different alternative mm -hmm. and i'll be fascinated to see what the people who are listening or watching feel about that um i think there's definitely something that we will lose when we have the fact that we don't have the ability to get people in the same room but then you can argue with a lot of people that that was always a difficult part of being there they didn't want to be in the room or they physically couldn't get to the room mm -hmm. That's right. um you know yeah. so we're we're making this more accessible to people who maybe want oh, to I, think that I think you've, yeah. you've hit the nail on the head but you know when we can start to meet people i guarantee you as soon as, as soon as the world opens up again we are going to be rushing out going, oh, yes. yeah. we, you know but it, i mean as an alternative mm -hmm. to say maybe once yeah, you know, I think you do it every other every the last Thursday. So maybe two out of three in the quarter are done virtual because mm -hmm. you can then spread that message through through whatever. And also, because I live in the boonies, so my friend says I actually only live twenty five miles west of London. But it's di it's difficult to get to where you guys normally have. You know, for me to get to the East End or the City of London is two hours from where I live, and it's a, it's a two hour trip. Yeah. Thanks, me two hours as well. Yeah, exactly. And you, you're carrying all sorts of <laughs> bad stuff yeah. going on. But yeah, so, it's so yeah. I mean, we we always we've we uh, for for a long time now we've been streaming the events, uh, and obviously the intention there is to try and uh, try and uh, yeah provide provide a more accessible event uh, and enable more people to be to to partake. But I think there's definitely we could possibly introduce more more of a kind of interactive element of you know simply rather than just pushing out video. Let's you know, see if we can also create a slightly more interactive um, environment whilst we're actually at the in person events as well so i think there's there's a lot of scope there's a lot of learning to go through all of this and i appreciate this is incredibly um you know incredibly challenging time but you know let's see if we can find some positives out of it in any small way that we can i had a really interesting conversation with lee about basically this conversation and we've actually had a client who's supposed to be promoting an event that's happening back end of the year and of course we have no idea how long what's going to go on are people going to commit to anything if they don't know and actually if you think about it how many people were like, what, in the UK, we're like four days in and everyone's already wanting to go outside. So people are going to be screaming out for live events. But I think this would be a good accompaniment to the event. So it might be that you alternated it by having slightly less events. It means when they're on, people go and you might get a, a bet an even better attendance because, of course, more people can hear about it where if it's a two-hour drive to get there, 
they might not do it every time, but actually it might be that if it's every other one, okay, well now I can justify it because I also know it'll be good number and all of that. Of It'll be a really strong event. There'll be lots of people there, loads of opportunity. Digital is no different though than being in a room. If there's a hundred people, you're never talking to all of them anyway. You've still got to find the right people. Right. To talk yes, to. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. With everybody. Okay. I think we so I'm going to stop there because I think there's actually some really really interesting stuff here for us to discuss in the wider um, with the wider audience here. Um, so just want to say before we finish up uh, a huge huge thank you both to you uh, Andrew and Tristan uh, for giving your time this evening and, and being speakers and. and yeah, enabling us to be able to do this is two fantastic talks and you've covered off some really really interesting stuff um, and i'd really love to be able to continue this conversation as we go into our, our social um in zoom i've put um the link i put the zoom id on the screen there uh, but before we go into that i'm just going to take everybody off the screen i'm just going to run through just a final couple of slides uh, but i think if we can you know say a, a big big thank you and a big round of applause yeah, to tristan you. and and andrew really really appreciate it it is for tristan not me <laughs> we shall see you in the zoom in a moment where's the link where's the oh it's in the email right cheers <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so just going to really quickly wrap this up before we can go uh, go in and join our social over in Zoom. Uh, the this evening has been possible thanks to our sponsors. We got Dolly and Yoast. I want to say a huge thank you to them uh, for enabling us to be able to deliver this event online. This uh, URL wpldn.uk forward slash feedback is more relevant to our in person events. But if you do have any feedback generally, we would love to hear from you. So please do uh, hit us up on either Twitter, Facebook, or through our website. Uh, we'd love to know what you think of this event, whether or not it's something that you would like to see going forward. Our next scheduled event will be the 30th of April. Uh, given the current circumstances, we uh, believe that this will obviously be a virtual event. Uh, so along the similar lines of what you've seen this evening. We're now going to head over to our social in Zoom. Uh, we have removed the password. Uh, so please do come and join us. You need to drop in 833-724-405 as the Zoom ID. Other than that, thank you all so much. It's been a pleasure to watch and read the chat that's been going on. It's been a pleasure to have you here this evening and look forward to joining you in the social in Zoom in a moment. Speak soon. <laughs>